Hi and welcome to a new video. This video is just going through the latest uh, firmware update that's available for the GT AXE 16000. So currently this is the top of the range Wi-Fi 6E uh, router from uh, Asus. Um, so as you can see here I'm going via the uh, dashboard but as usual you can use your app and go into the relevant menu from there into your uh, settings and then go to firmware update and that will do exactly the same as we're doing here. I just prefer to go through this way is sometimes this gives you a bit more information and I do like the uh, dashboard as it gives you more advanced settings. So as you can see here first sign is we've got an update will be that um, you've got a little bell here so that means that's flashing that means there's a notification and normally that notification means you've got a new firmware version. So as usual, um, it normally loads up when you go into the uh, the router dashboard. So this is uh, normally the default IP address of 192.168.50.1. Again, this may be a little bit different if you've set up um, to access it by uh, securely. So it's using HTTPS then normally you will have a, a port number of 8443 that you add to the end of the IP address. Anyway, so we normally will just go straight down to the uh, scroll down. And as you can see here, you just go to administration. Um, and then we go to the firmware upgrade. And here, if you do have the uh, AI mesh um, enabled, then also you will get to see the other uh, routers, uh, Asus routers that are on the network. So you can see here, I've actually got a, um, as an basically a separate router on the AI mesh system. I'm using the uh, one of the ET12 um, mesh uh, routers. So that's connected together to give a larger uh, Wi-Fi network across the house. So when you do click on the uh, check box here, so this button here, you can then, um, it will check for both of them at the same time. So it saves you having to check individual ones as well. So as you can see also, there is a tick box underneath where it says they would like to receive uh, beta firmware. So that's basically test uh, firmware. So um, if you are happy with that, you can check for that as well and upgrade. So you can get to access and see new features before the uh, public release. But again, if you're using this router as your main home network where you rely on it day to day for your work from home, your office, or you know, your streaming or your children use it all the time, um, then just be wary of using uh, beta firmware because it is testing. It'll probably have more bugs than usual. So you don't want to have current disconnections and things like that. So it's to, if, if you do want to test it, then so be it. But just be wary of that. Um, if you are using it as your main router, it's probably, I advise probably best not to. Okay, so um, as you can see here, um, now I've clicked the check button. It does say I've got a firmware upgrade button that's come up as well. And it will say here which of the routers that you've got. So you can see here again that this one is currently the ET12 is on the latest version, but you can see that the uh, GT AXE 16000 does have a new update. So if you can actually just click on the firmware upgrade button and it will upgrade straight away for you. But sometimes if you are interested to see what the actual upgrades are, so if you've had issues in the past, it's always like a good best practice just to click on that one there. This will then load up the release notes and what they are is the actual what the things it's actually changing. So as you can see here is actually fixing uh, or changing uh, nine uh, items. So it's always good to see. So you can see the first one is actually it's fixing a security update. So that's a vulnerability. You can normally tell these because they always start with a CVE number um, and then it's the year. So this one goes back to 2022. And then this uh, last sets of numbers that identifies what the actual issue was. And this one actually is a particular one is around a library. So this is an, basically um, a vulnerability that could potentially be exploited. Um, it is being used in um, via Firefox and uh, other Debian Lin Linux uh, configurations as well. So again, this is where I say that sometimes it is good to uh, 
constantly check for updates and if you are uh, someone that just wants to set up the router and forget about it and don't want to worry about these things then it's always best practice perhaps to uh, to switch on the auto update function uh, because then at least then you're always patched for the latest security and you don't have to worry about coming in here and updating them i prefer just to leave it off because i i um, prefer to actually just have a look here and then also for uh, for yourself as well i can just go through it much easier as you can see here so basically this is a debian one where they're saying this cve 2022 uh, 46871 so this is again is, is basically around a library um, is a bit complicated around um, development headers um, so basically it is just a vulnerability around the on top of IP and UDP so that's different versions and supports uh, both uh, version IP version 4 and 6 so basically it's just a vulnerability that allows someone to get into the router um, so again it's good they actually um, they've actually patched it as well so you can see the next one is uh, fixed the is the client dom stored xss so again sometimes um, they, they'll put the technical names on there you can just google them and sometimes it will give you an explanation um, but it would be nice sometimes if asus actually just perhaps i know for the normal user would just put a, like a, a quick little explanation or a summary there so people could understand what they actually fixed um, but so as we see number two there, as it does say uh, to most people, it probably won't mean anything, a client DOM stored XSS. Uh, so basically the DOM based XSS um, is an attack where the attacker has a payload and it's executed as a result in a modified uh, DOM environment in the victim's browser. So that's your uh, Chrome or your Firefox or your Edge or your Safari if you're using Apple computers. So basically it just allows them to... Um, wherein there's a the in the attack of the uh, xss it's basically uh, a payload into your uh, browser and basically adapt and change something that's going in there so it could actually change a web address when you're clicking on something so you'll think you are clicking on the correct link uh, within the actual router so you think you're going to official uh, link um, it's taking you to some asus or to some settings page when in fact it could be then actually storing cookies or anything else in there so this is quite a, a good one that's been patched and everything else and uh, quite worrying that sometimes uh, these th these vulnerabilities come out but it's again it's good that asus are really good on top of it and always constantly updating even some of the older routers now have been out for several years like the gtax lm1000 that i still use and they're still putting out firmware updates as well on that for security because most of the time now everything is wi-fi enabled um i think i even saw a toothbrush as wi-fi enabled now so everything seems to be connected to the internet and an app or something and your router's the main connection to the internet and is protecting you most so it's good that they're actually supporting security updates so next third is the improved ai mesh backhaul a bit stability um, so again this is around the ai mesh so as you've seen in some previous videos ai mesh is where you can connect several uh, routers together so you can see in this example i've got my gta xc 16000 and then i've got one uh, zen wi-fi pro et12 um, so again this is around the backhaul so you can see here I've got mine switched to Ethernet because I use Ethernet. But again, the stability can be between using Wi-Fi. So again, that is your uh, Wi-Fi 5 or, or the uh, 6 gigahertz frequencies if your uh, routers support that. So it's good that they're adding stability and things like that to the actual um, to the actual router and as well because it's quite important. Next, uh, we're moving on to uh, number uh, four so you can see again it's around the ai mesh that we just looked at so the topology ui bugs again ui is the user interface so that's going around how it displays items and things like that so they've there's been a few bugs in there where you don't normally see some items that are actually showing up as devices connected to the individual route um, routers um, you've got to set up so it's good they've fixed that Number five, again, they've fixed the reboot issue uh, when assigning certain clients within a VPN fusion. So have a look in my uh, playlist, as you've seen other videos where I go through VPN fusion. So basically that's 
a VPN system that's set up with uh, Asus where you can connect third party um, VPN servers um, like NordVPN and things like that where you can connect them uh, and Surfshark sorry um, and several others around the actual VPN so you can have certain devices go connect like your TV to pretend it's in America or any other so if you want to use that for any reason. Number six is they fixed the VPN fusion bug. So there was a bug around when you were importing Surfshark, WireGuard, the configuration file. So that's around, as we said, just the VPN fusion. Um, you normally have to uh, download a configuration file from the um, your VPN provider and then upload it to the actual router um, under the VPN fusion uh, option. But um, they did have an issue where it was particularly for WireGuard um, on the Surfshark when you uploaded it, it didn't always import properly or come up with an error. So it's good that they've fixed that now because WireGuard is like a newer standard now um, and it's uh, actually more efficient and faster for devices to connect. So you don't uh, have too much of a slowdown when connecting uh, devices via VPN. Seven, we've got the network map uh, bug fix. So as you can see here under advanced settings, you do have the network map and then that's basically sees, you can see all your devices that are connected to the router and you'll be able to then filter, you know, which ones are two, under 2.4, the five and the six, and then also ethernet connected as well. Uh, second to last, we now have the fixed, uh, the Wi-Fi 6C connection issue with phones. So that's good. So any of your routers that have got Wi-Fi 6C and support that, they are constantly giving updates on that as well because there was some issues where uh, phones and also tablets were having uh, issues connecting onto the 6 gigahertz frequency and disconnecting and things like that. So it's good. There's an update for that to make the connection more uh, stable. And lastly, we have the fixed port status UI. So again, that is under your network map. So if we just go to back, uh, go to network map, and you'll see the uh, status here. So you can see your Ethernet status ports here. So here you can see there, you know, what devices are connected, um, and then if they're, you know, what their actually ports are. And you can click on the little uh, exclamation mark if there is one and it will tell you why something has got a warning on it. So you can see here on one of my 10 gig ports, uh, it's saying the connection on these ports can be improved. Um, so basically it's because I've plugged in one of the 2.5 uh, gigabits on there. And if you just hover your mouse over, you can see the speed of the port. So it's just warning to say this is a 10 gig and you're not getting the full 10 gig out of that port. Um, so that's good that they've updated that now because before it wasn't really showing very clearly um, on devices connected. So again, that's another one. So now we'll move on and we'll actually go through the uh, update process. Okay, so we're back to the actual uh, firmware upgrade screen under administration option. So as we can see here, we've got the firmware upgrade button. If for any reason you this doesn't work and you can't, it, it comes up with an error, you can manually upload the firmware update. So you can either go to the Asus support website or just Google your router. Um, or router name uh, into Google and just uh, put in the word firmware afterwards and normally it will take you to the support page. So the support page will look something like this um, and you can see here um, it will totally take you to the FAQ first. So you can see here this is the actual product. You can go to drivers and tools and then you'll go just go across and you'll see here the uh, BIOS and firmware. So you just want to click on that and then you'll see it load up. So you, now you can see the latest firmware. So this is the one that's going to download automatically. It'll give us the information that we've just gone through so you can see more about the description. But also is good as well if you're doing it in the manual version, if you do upgrade and then you have any issues. If you click on the button here that says see all downloads, you can then see all the previous versions. So if you knew there was a version, like the last version was actually working well for you, then you can just click on that and download that previous version that you knew um, was uh, stable for you. But generally, if you're upgrading, there should be no issues because they do test this before they release it to the public. So if we just go back again, so then now we'll just go to firmware upgrade. So once you click that, just be wary that uh, your devices will probably disconnect from uh, the internet. So when it finishes downloading the actual firmware, 
it will then start applying the update and then automatically uh, restart the uh, router um, and then once it's done that then of course it will disconnect your devices again do leave uh, 10 to 15 minutes for this it should be much quicker but sometimes just be wary um, it depends on how big the update is and things like that so just be wary of that so your devices won't be connecting uh, for that so if you've got children uh, connecting to the internet or someone streaming something that disconnects you know what people are like you've got to give them a bit of time uh, and uh, wait for that wait for the update to complete so we'll just come back once we this is completed as it says there it should be around three minutes So you now see that the uh, update has been completed. It did take uh, uh, five minutes for it to update and the devices did dis disconnect. Also make sure that you just, if it does freeze or anything like that, just give it time, like I said. Uh, don't switch off the router while it's updating the firmware because you can cause damage um, to it and everything else. So just give it time and, um, and wait for it. It will actually restart. So as you can see now, we've got back into the log, login screen and I'm just going to log in with my details and log back into the router. And then you can just go back to the advanced um, settings and then into administration and also back to here if you do want to then uh, complete other updates. Again, so uh, that's been the uh, quick run through of the update and then the process for the GTA XC 16,000 again for it's the same process as for every up, update you have for the firmware and as I said before there is this option here where you can auto uh, switch this on and it, as it says here by enabling this this will auto firmware update the system will upgrade your uh, router or router uh, automatically at preferred time if a newer version is available for download so it will automatically do that for you. Again, if you do have AI mesh enabled, you may have an issue where after doing the uh, upgrading the firmware, you might notice that your other devices and AI mesh have not uh, actually connected. It might be worth just switching them off and giving them a quick restart, but normally they will reconnect by themselves automatically. So again, just give that a little uh, 10, 15 minutes for it to reconnect. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching and as usual, if you have any uh, questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.